Hi guys, Jared Wiggins here from TechnoRC, and today we're here to talk about some of our newly released option parts. Starting, we'll have the minus two rear hubs. These rear hubs lower your rear axle two millimeters. Uh, they provide a little bit more roll and rear grip in the car. They also have a higher roll center option. So there's two holes. The stock hub is in the middle. So we recommend running in the low setting for all conditions, um, but you may use that high setting somewhere where you run on AstroTurf or some artificial surfaces. So these hubs lower your rear axle and give you a little more rear grip. And paired with that, we have a new rear gearbox that also lowers the diff two millimeters. You'll wanna use these two parts together to keep all the driveline angle the same, but by lowering your driveline, they both will give you more consistent rear grip and an easier to drive car. So we recommend when you use the hubs, you also use the gearbox. Along with the gearbox, we have adjustable front spindles that lower the front axle two millimeters as well. You just bolt these up in place of the stock spindles and you use the newer bushings as well and pins that are shorter. Uh, that way you can service the bearings easier. So these front spindles will give you a little bit smoother initial steering, more mid to exit steering, and also just more consistent front grip. They pair well with the rear hubs and the rear gearbox. I wouldn't suggest using them without those. You kind of want to keep the balance of your car the same by lowering both the front and rear axles. When you do use those, you'll want to go back and get another one of the gearboxes to use in the front as well, just to keep all the driveline angle the same and the balance uh, like the car was before, just adding more grip. When you use the rear hubs, a part you'll need is the rear suspension arms that are revised. They have some cutting out for the drive shaft just to give a little more clearance. Uh, you don't need to use these. You can just Dremel the standard arms and just be really careful to make sure the drive shaft isn't hitting, especially where the universal is and in the center. Uh, but just for ease of use, uh, we revised the rear arms so they just bolt right up with the rear hubs and gearbox and you don't have to worry about any sanding or dremeling. The last part to go with these are the rear uh, bulkhead covers, uh, the stock covers. They don't have any holes in them. So with the diff a little bit lower, it hangs down just a little. So there's a cutout for the nitro and electric side. Uh, you can also just like the arms, uh, slot your diff covers and do this to your stock ones, but these ones are already ready to go. One final note, if you are using these parts on the nitro buggy, just the nitro buggy has this. Since the chassis is a little thinner than the other cars, you're gonna wanna give a little bit of clearance on the gear side where the cutout is underneath the diff. About a half mil uh, down into the chassis, just dremel it a little bit, front and rear, wherever you're using the gearbox. The e-buggy and the truggies don't have, have to do this, but the nitro buggy with a thinner chassis needs just a little bit of clearancing. All the chassis now that you've purchased through our website and soon to be with our dealers will have those cutouts revised in them, but for now with your existing chassis, just give it a little bit of clearancing underneath those gears. The last few parts we have are new lightweight shock towers. They came out a little bit before our other gearboxes. Starting out, we have the lightweight front buggy tower. As you can see, it's got cutouts in it and we eliminated some of the roll center options and one shock tower location to cut some weight. Uh, this front tower shaves eight to 10 grams off the front of your car. The second tower is our rear shock tower. Same thing, it's got some lightning cuts in it, as well as getting rid of one set of camber leg holes and the short shock position holes, as we don't really use the short shocks anymore. We like the long ones for all the 2.1 cars. Um, and it's also one millimeter thinner. With this rear tower, it shaves almost 20 grams off the rear of the car and makes a big difference in just the ease of driving and the handling of your buggy. It keeps the weight a little bit lower and just makes the car a little smoother to drive. The final two parts are the lightweight towers for the Truggy. The front tower, as you can see, these look a little bit more dramatic. They have a, a cut down in the middle. They eliminate the old standard body mount holes and now they're designed around our new style uh, Bruggy bodies to shave some weight and they just, they look cooler as well. They have slightly different uh, shock location and camber link locations. And where we recommend on the truck front is one hole from stood up on the front tower and the inner middle camber link hole. For the rear tower, 
Um, same thing, it's got a little different profile to it and the camera link and shock tower holes are also adjusted. To start off, we recommend using one from uh, the furthest in hole for the shock mount, as well as one from the bottom on the camera link holes in the inside position. Everything else should line up nicely. The heights of the shocks, everything stays the same. These just shave a significant weight amount off of your cars and make them easier to drive and look a little nicer. Thanks for checking out this video about all of our new option parts. You can view them on our website at www.technorc.com and we hope to see you at the track.